In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for a volar wrist hand orthosis, also known as a resting pan orthosis. So the first thing you're going to do is just have your client place their hand on a piece of paper or paper toweling, something like that, so you can trace uh, the shape of their hand and some landmarks, which we'll go over in a minute. So first thing, just go ahead and trace right along the outside of their hand, more or less like that. You can go ahead and skip um, going around the thumb because we're going to do that separately. And then come up the arm again, about up to the thumb. Now, once you've done that, you're going to want to draw some landmarks. And the landmarks that you want to uh, identify and draw are the thumb metacarpal phalangeal joint, the radial styloid, which is right about there. And so just kind of make a mark where those things are. And then the web space between the index and middle finger. Make a little dot there. Once you've done that, you can remove your client's hand. And now we're going to do some things with those. So the next thing I would suggest that you do is actually draw around this outline of the hand, um, expanding your pattern just a little bit so that you have enough room to wrap halfway around the forearm, contour up around the fingers, and that sort of thing. So just doing this kind of freehand, uh, I would do something like that. Maybe a little bit more over here. And then up here around the hand, just enough so that you will have enough material to contour around the sides and bring it up a little bit. Don't want so much uh, extra material that when you contour around, it's going to hold the strap away from the skin, or you know you're going to have to just cut it off. But uh, you kind of get the idea here. All right, and then coming up from the here, you're going to want to make that a little bit more. You know, down here on the forearm where you have uh, more that you have to kind of come up and contour around. All right. So that's that, and now we have to figure out the thumb part. So for the thumb part, we're going to connect some lines and dots. So first take this line here, or this dot here, uh, where you um, drew between the index and middle finger web space, and just extend that straight down a bit. And then take this line here, where you had the thumb metacarpophalangeal joint, and just come straight across on that, pretty much like that. Okay, so from there, you're going to draw the flap that will become your thumb, on the, the part of the orthosis that will hold the thumb. And so you're going to start right here at that intersection and you are going to come pretty much straight down. And then when you get to this line where the radial styloid was, you're going to kind of come across a little bit. Make this plenty wide. Uh, you can always cut off uh, if you have too, you know, too much width, um, but it's nice to have enough width. Uh, so you can get that thumb immobilized and positioned just how you want it. And then you kind of come up here and then this will eventually just kind of come over and join the, uh, the rest of the orthosis up around the fingers here. Uh, you do want to leave yourself, you know, some extra room in here because that will become uh, the part of the orthosis that actually ends up wrapping around the radial side of the hand and the radial side of the web space to give it some extra strength. So as far then as how we're actually gonna 
cut or where our cut lines will be. I'm going to trace right over this red that we just drew with my green again here. And we're going to cut up here and up into here. All right, something like that. And then as this comes up here, rather than having this, you know, sharp pointy bit here, I'm just going to take this and kind of curve it right down. All right. So this is going to be our cut lines here. The other thing you'll want to check at this point before you cut this out too much is that your forearm length is appropriate uh, going, you know, two thirds of the way uh, down the forearm to the elbow. And this looks pretty close. So I'm going to take this then and I'm just going to start cutting my pattern. And you can just kind of take this and actually cut around here and we'll cut that inside part of the thumb later on. When you're cutting, if you feel like you drew a little too close or a little too far, whatever, you didn't get it quite even, you can just I'll fix that while you cut it like this. There we go. And so that's our pattern more or less. And then we can go back and cut out this little thumb piece here. And you just go up to right where that line from the thumb uh, MCP joint was. And then again, I'm just going to cut round this off to get rid of that funny sharp little corner and that is our pattern so how that's going to work then is when we make our splint or our orthosis uh, this is just going to go over here this will come up like this and right where this kind of joins here where you cut it up to that is going to go right on the web space so you can basically Bring that way right down to here okay and then this will contour around the forearm my paper of course doesn't contour like splinting material would but then this is going to contour around the thumb and hold that in place and meanwhile on the back side you have this of course contouring around the hand when you do contour your um volar wrist hand orthosis you do want to make sure that you have a nice longitudinal arch for the fingers don't go totally straight that's going to be pretty uncomfortable just have a nice longitudinal arch and then this way make sure you get this nice transverse arch this orthosis should eventually have you know in addition to the sides that will you know contour up and around, it should actually have kind of a nice um, concavity to it there. There's a temptation often just to make it like that, but if you make it like that, you're going to end up with fingers that are kind of scrunched up like that, and that's going to be uncomfortable. So make sure you respect that uh, distal transverse arch as well, uh, and so that the hand goes the way it is designed to go. So that is the process of making the pattern for your resting pan orthosis or another name for it is the volar wrist hand orthosis.